What's up, everybody? So, uh, I know one of the big trends right now with AR-15s is the popularity of the AR pistols. And they're becoming incredibly popular, not just because they're they're fun and they're, and they're interesting and they're new, uh, or they're not really new. They've been around since the 90s, but now they're really becoming prominent. But also because they are an endangered species. These are guns that right now, um, I'll be flat out honest with you, uh, I wouldn't be surprised if, if an effort is made to make them uh, illegal within the next couple of months. So that being said, I wanted to build one. I've, I've really had an interest in them, uh, but really it didn't take off until back this the last half of this last year when it's like, man, I just think that would make a great home defense uh, rifle or a um, like a truck, like a trunk gun, truck gun, you know, something that you would take in a vehicle in the event of the uh, unforeseen worst case scenario. So that said, let's get into it. This is exactly how I, I transport this particular uh, platform. Uh, it's, in an U it's in a case made by UTG. This is their uh, ABC sling pack. It is their Alpha Battle Carrier sling pack. Let's go ahead and open it up and let's get the case out of the way. to an AR pistol is its size and its weight in particular because a carbine or rifle has to have a minimum length barrel of 16 inches. Um, these can have shorter barrels and still be completely legal. The magazine is removed for the purpose of the uh, YouTube safety patrol. Guns clear. All right. So let's take a look at her. So why did I pick the AR pistol? Again, the interest has been peaked, but also because it's a home defense weapon, um, just like a handgun, you're operating in close quarters, so you want something that's gonna be small and agile and nimble and light, easy to maneuver in small confined spaces. Pretty simple. This is built on a Ruger AR556 pistol. This is not a high dollar carbine. This is not uh, a Daniel Defense. This is not a BCM. It's, it's not that. It's Ruger. And we all know Ruger makes good stuff. They also make stuff that tends to be really reasonably priced, even if it's not premium quality. And I don't say that to throw shade at Ruger, but there are some things that definitely need some attention um, long-term to really make this an, the pinnacle of what I want it to be. So let's just talk through what's on it. I will do some individual videos um, related to certain parts of this that I think bear some 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 special treatment for themselves um, because there's some, this is this is a great project gun, but man, some of these things have some nuance to them. We'll talk about that in other videos. So the first thing I, I did is I took a, a basic off-the-shelf Ruger AR-556 pistol, which are classified as an optic-ready gun, meaning there's no sights. Um, let's be honest, optic-ready is basically uh, marketing for, we didn't figure we would chart, we didn't figure we put sights on it. Um, so yeah, sorry. So there were no sights. This was just a basic gun with a free float rail and a pistol brace. So this gun it really does have, I mean, really for the most part, everything about the, the exterior of this gun has been handled, uh, been addressed with the exception of the uh, SB Tactical SB3 pistol brace. This is not a stock. In fact, if you notice the Velcro, there is a, uh, this is a rubberized section at the bottom that's actually designed to go around the forearm. So if I was using this, properly, I would actually take my grip, put my forearm in the gap here, in the gap of this piece, kind of open around my arm and then Velcro it. The idea that what these were really intended for were to support people who have uh, maybe some physical limitations so that they could still shoot the gun uh, with some additional support if they maybe had some uh, physical limitations or injuries uh, that might have made it more difficult to shoot it traditionally. Cool, genius idea. 
Um, there's a lot of controversy with the with the pistol braces that I won't go into here. Honestly, at this point in time, you can shoot these shoulder just like you would a normal carbine until the ATF decides to change their decision for the for the fifth time. And so we'll just go with it. You can still operate this gun just pretty much how you would as a, car, a normal AR-15 carbine. The pistol brace is still the original. I have added to this a Magpul ASAP QD uh, sling uh, attachment point at the rear so that I can use the Magpul MS4 sling either as a single point attached to the end of the receiver. This is basically just changing out the receiver end plate to one that has a sling QD on it. So now I could I could pretty much take and flip this sling around into a uh, into a single point if I chose to. I also add for the purpose of the sling a QD uh, sling attachment point to the front of the gun because I do prefer to run my sling as a two point. So I made that adjustment. Those two pieces I've added those were from Magpul. Same with the sling. This is the MS4 sling. They used to be called the multi mission sling. I'm not sure if they still refer to them as such. Um, but you can actually attach the sling back around as a single point, which we talked about briefly. So now I have it all configured for a single point, but it also has this awesome slider on it, which I say it's awesome because I tell you what, I like how this works for me, but I can adjust the length of the sling just by grabbing the slider, pull it tight, pull it loose, however I need to do. Moving forward from the sling, the attachment point there. I changed out the pistol grip that came on it from Ruger, which honestly, guys, I, I know Ruger makes some, some pretty good stuff, but they really kind of dropped the ball with the pistol grip, I think, because it was extremely slick, very fat grip, honestly. And I replaced it with Magpul's MOE K2+, Plus, so a little more of a vertical angle instead of the, the, more, the more like a Glock style grip. It's a little more up and down vertical. So with a shorter length of pull, I still can get a good grip, still reach and operate the safety without having to really just you know break my my grip on the gun i added the magpul bad lever from a um efficiency of motion uh, standpoint being able to operate the gun with the least amount of wasteful movement is a huge help all right so the other change that I did kind of as we're talking about this is I changed out the mil spec uh, charging handle for a Bravo company manufacturing. This is the BCM gunfighter. So it's not the ambidextrous version. So I still have to operate it from the left side of the gun, but instead of having to bring both fingers over and get a good and get that grip on those little nubs, I can operate that very easily just by catching the, the the lip on this side, which is larger, it's got more grip surface, and they've re, uh, redesigned the angle that this is attached at, where this pin is at, to give more leverage without impacting um, the durability. See, PCM gunfighter. Very, very good uh, charging handle, by the way. Not the most expensive, not the cheapest. All right, so up top, I added Magpul's Imbus Gen 2 sights. They're uh, backup iron sights. These are polymer. They're extremely lightweight, but I've had the first gen and they were great. These are really no, no different. These are really cool. They are co-witnessed with my optic. So if my optic were to go down, I have a pair of sights that I can still run with, but they save me some of the unnecessary weight of the steel sights and on a pistol designed to be light and maneuverable weights a lot of, of the good stuff so with having a heavier optic having a heavier light we're about to talk about i'm saving weight as best i can so moving forward from the backup sites i do have a hollow sun optic which i laugh because it really is like having an eotech again i love it uh so this hollow sun is the hs 510c it is basically configured with the same type of reticle as an eotech with a 65 moa ring and a two MOA dot in the middle. I can actually customize this. This is a multi-reticle system, so I can actually turn off the ring or turn off the dot and have just one or the other, or in this case, I have both. And it's powered by a watch battery, a CR2032 battery. It's got 50,000 hours of life, and it has a solar panel up top so that if I'm out in broad daylight, it's gonna give it a redundant power supply, and it's gonna help improve uh, how much light it can produce at a minimal amount of uh, draw on that battery. So that makes that battery last even longer. These rails are very nice, M-lock rails. Rails, it is free floated, but because they are so low profile, they get hot as a mofo. Um, they are so close to the gas tube, they're so close to that barrel that when it starts heating up, this becomes very, very uncomfortable. So I've added Magpul's uh, M lock rail covers just to help reduce that issue. And I've added their M lock AFG to the front of the gun to help as well by giving me more polymer for my hands to attach to versus metal. That AFG is not my favorite. I really, really thought it would be great. I have not been as impressed with it, but I still wanted something that has the forward uh, hand stop so that I can't accidentally run my hand down and either cook it or 
make it holy. Another great feature that this has set up on it um, is I've added a Surefire weapon light to it. This is the Scout Light Pro with dual fuel. This has the rechargeable battery in it that came with it. It's a 3500 milliamp hour battery. It's the model 18650 and it recharges through a micro USB port. So this battery I can just recharge with off of my multi change cable and is good to go. And because it has this rechargeable battery in the light, it will throw out 1500 lumens. Now I can switch this rechargeable battery out for a standard CR123 or a pair of anyway. So two CR123s and it will still output at 1200 lumens. All in all, 1500 lumen output, rechargeable battery. That is a fantastic thing to have, especially if you keep it topped off, charge it up every couple weeks, just make sure it's, it's solid and rock and roll. This thing is absolutely fantastic. And that's a lot of light to put down range. Now it doesn't have a pressure switch. Um, I'm debating if I'm going to do that or not. Uh, it has just a standard Z68 um, tail cap on it. So press momentary click for constant. And I absolutely am just, I'm happy with that because as I get my firing grip on the gun, my thumb comes right over the top. And especially if I've got it situated properly, I can just reach right over and activate that light. It is on a uh, M-Lock low profile mount and it comes with a low, a low profile switch out for this for a M1913 Picatinny. So I could actually mount it up top or if this had rail sections, I could attach it that way too. So all in all, a lot of options. But one way or the other, this is by far and away uh, the most I've I've really invested into tailoring an AR in, out of any of them I've ever had, and I find it to be one of the one of my favorite projects. I've really enjoyed putting it together, but I'm also just so excited with how it came out. Um, I run this with Magpul P Mags. These are the Gen 3s mostly. I have a couple of Gen 2s, but for the most part, I stick to the Gen 3s mainly because I like the uh, the texturing to them. I can grab a better grip when I'm reloading. I love that it has the ability to mark the magazines specifically I mean it's you can obviously just write on them but um, it actually has an area specifically designed to notate so what which magazines which it helps you to identify when you have a stoppage on one keep, keep I know which one it was I can keep an eye on it um, that my PMAG for my my PMAG for my 19 block also have that same feature and I do the same thing there um, ammo wise I've loaded this up with Federal Tactical TRU 55 grain um, 223 ammo. This uses a Nosler ballistic tip round. These were designed and, and marketed heavily to law enforcement, and I kind of went that route, A, because it was the first I found available of a truly personal defense tailored ammunition that was available. So guys, right now, 223 and 9 mil, forget it. Um, you, you take what you can get. And that up to this point, all I've had was just ball eight M855, which in and of itself created some issues. I would not feel comfortable running that as a defensive ammo. So real quick, a couple of considerations. If you are even contemplating doing an AR pistol, please think about a couple of things very carefully. One, it's a pistol, not a rifle. So there are different regulations and laws regarding them in terms of certain states that allow, certain states that don't. Just be careful, know the laws in your area because there's always some finicky bullshit somewhere. Um, secondly, because it's a pistol, it means you have to be very, very specific as to what ammo you run in it. Uh, this has a 10 and a half inch barrel, as I mentioned earlier, and most 223 slash 556 ammunition is tailored for a 16 inch barrel or longer, mainly because this caliber of ammunition is very much dependent on velocity to function, but very, very much so with, with this particular caliber. Um, it's very light projectile that highly, highly, highly relies on speed more than anything else to function and to expand properly or to, to, to do the damage it's supposed to do. So if you have a shorter barrel that cannot produce the velocity needed or maintain the velocity needed, uh, it can cause failure of the ammunition to function properly and it can become uh, ineffective against a, a lethal threat. Now, I specifically, set this gun up to only be, I mean it's really only designed to work at an in-home distance so as a home defense gun it is sighted in at the longest distance in my house uh, so that when I am when the dot is on the target it is it would be a point of aim point of impact at the length of uh, engagement distance in the house so I'm not going to take this out and shoot 100 200 300 yards with it could the gun successfully do that yes with some attention to what you're doing you could definitely hit something at longer distances it's not made for that. So be conscious of that. Be conscious of your ammo selection. It is a fantastic gun overall. Um, I still have intentions of making some improvements on the trigger uh, and the bolt carrier group, even though it's more, it's adequate, I am highly considering upgrading
upgrading it to something from BCM or Wilson Combat just to get uh, something that is a little more tailor-made for reliability. And I definitely want to get rid of the Ruger flash hider. This thing has the the, the muzzle. <laughs> it has the nose of a, of a Mini 14 and I hate it. Um, so that's about all I'm going to change. So in terms of the case that you, I showed in the, in the beginning of the video, this is from, as I said earlier, this is from a company called UTG. It was it is designed to hold two uh, weapons simultaneously. There's actually a divider that is Velcroed. It can be Velcroed in place. Uh, muzzle into the pocket at the end, and you have a Velcro leash at, at the opposite to keep the gun in place. It is designed with these pull tabs that you see here um, so that it could be used as a deployment platform if somebody were to want to carry it discreetly in a, let's just use um, a without a rule of law situation or in a bug out situation where you have to take the gun and run for the safety of you and your family. You could conceal the weapon in here out of sight, out of mind. It doesn't look like a gun, but if you had to deploy it, you could from within the bag, uh, almost like a uh, concealed carry pocket on a bat on a, on a bag backpack. I mean, kind of the same concept. It has three pockets on the front of it. Uh, this, one, this bottom one will fit two AR-15 mags. Uh, it's actually why I have Ranger floor plates on my carry on my primary magazines, because getting these out of here in a hurry, it's a quick grab and go. But I can throw two in these and no problem. This middle pocket will hold pretty much whatever you would need to put in there. I usually will put in that something like a couple spare handgun magazines or I have it also also at times if, if I really felt the need, I can actually use and it came with a um, Velcro, a cheap Velcro holster that I could actually use with my 43 or my 19 in all honesty. And it will mount inside of a hook and loop pan onto the hook and loop panel in this top pocket. So now I have a handgun that could be retained from the pocket. Not necessarily how I would what I would use it for. Obviously, the I think their intent was probably a little bit of that and a little bit of storage too. Um, but the hook and loop panel in here, uh, Vertex's Tactigami stuff works really good on this. So you know, it serves some other purposes. I wish honestly they had put that in all three panels. Other than that, this this has done really well for me. And because I can take it, I'll tell you right off the bat. After the uh, January sixth riots at in Washington D and uh, DC, and with the concern of even more violence as the inauguration got closer i actually set this up in my in my vehicle to travel with me uh since i i, I work roughly an hour and a half from home and so there is definitely the traversing the big city of Pittsburgh. Once I cleared Pittsburgh, it's not so bad. But, you know, I did have this in the car stowed behind the front seat um, and just a blanket kind of over it. But as discreet and nondescript as this is, no one, seen, no one would have noticed it anyway. But it was there. It was there. And on the front, it is a you can switch this, but it's a basically a sling. It's a single point, uh, pretty much like a sling pack you can throw over your back throw it over one shoulder and go. Um, and actually very, very uh, comfortable. I will give them that. Very wide. It has some areas where you can attach things to. And good grab handles on all th on three of four sides. All in all, great. It was not expensive. And considering, again, just like with ammo and guns, there wasn't a whole lot of options in stock because of all the insanity. So it worked out. I love it. It's done great. Beyond that, guys, that's about it. I appreciate it. Check out uh, some of these other videos. Please like, please subscribe, please share with your friends. Guys, it's uh, it's fun to be back, but I can see I got some work to do to start start getting back in, back in gear. All right, everybody. Thank you. See ya. Take care of each other. Take care of yourselves. Be safe.